Hey guys, Jen Crevasse, Jekyll Bates. It's Friday, it's your weekender. Um, give me just a couple seconds while I'm reassembling this head and vintage hula popper. These are the little guys and actually this little screwdriver is a little too big, it's okay. But one thing you might notice is that I always have my split ring on stuff like this because of the belly assembly. Um, always have my split ring and hook already on there because it is much easier to do it this way than if you're trying to put that split ring on afterwards. So just my little tip for the morning. When you're putting these things back together, I have done these for John Travis Pickering. And something I mentioned this morning on Facebook when I posted it, actually, I think I posted it yesterday on Thursday, the 24th of June. Today is June 25th. It's Friday, TGIF. Thank goodness I fish. Hopefully all of you guys do too, or at least paint, right? That's why you're here. Um, not even family, not even the bloodline can get bumped to the, to the head of the class. It's been so busy. He's been waiting on these for a very long time patiently as all of you guys have and I've got a whole lot to go through a whole lot to show you I'm very excited about it and I'm finally sitting in the shop and I've got the entire weekend to myself I'm gonna probably fish in the morning but then I'm working Sunday through July 3rd I'm gonna try and take fireworks and parade and stuff like that off um, it's brand new to me in Georgia so I'm excited to see what my local town of Resaca has uh, to offer. I'm hoping it's some cool stuff or at least Calhoun or Dalton around it. So go see what their July 4th is all about here in Georgia. Super stoked for that. But yeah, going back to this, um, always easier to have this ready to go off of your tail assembly. And this is probably a little bit rigged because the original ones, the original assembly, I don't believe there was even a split ring on it. More than likely the hook was just attached to that belly assembly and free swinging but then you can add the split ring and you can sort of you can kind of date these by the type of metal that's used and this is brass so my guess on these is going to be like late 70s early 80s on this popper if i'm wrong i'm wrong um i have not dated it i have no idea what um what year this is but i do have some uh collector's editions books that go all the way back to the 20s and 30s when they were still using legit broomsticks to make stuff like this. Um, Hedden's been around a long time. It's a Japanese company. Very cool. Love doing stuff like this. Just a little remake. It was just a very plain yellow and white and uh, all the hooks and split rings had rusted out. So we've just got the new belly assembly, some new split rings, and then I've got another 8 inch. And I'm, I'm using an eagle claw on this. Uh, you, the one thing, you don't want the hook to come past this edge here. So a six would be too big, and the hooks would have a tendency to kind of stick together when you toss it. So I use eights. It'll still catch fish very well. This thing is great. Um, up to you as to whether or not you want to put a direct line tie and your line, or if you want to put um, a little split ring on here. Usually stuff like this any more weight on the face and it's gonna bog it down a bit so again up to you guys what you do on that just a few more pieces along the lines with that i've got a couple of little bandits and again these are all um, fairly old i don't know if he had if john travis had reclaimed these but you can see the age by how uh, how smoky and old this is and also on some of these now the original paint you can see under here just a little bit um, on some of these older ones they would just slap a whatever right across and you would get into that and you know, where's a good example of how they did that so I don't if the bait is like that to begin with I don't try and scrape any of that away all I'm doing is doing exactly what whoever whatever brand bait made this and this is little little bandit so Normans are close to this too. So this is a little little bass pattern. 
lots of gold. So I've really kind of lucked into finding a really good gold for this, and it's that Liquitex Metallics. And it's not um, water-based acrylic. It's actually an alcohol-based ink. So hang on just a second. I'm going to show it to you. But it lays down thin enough to where you're still going to see that gold. But you're going to get um, the colors underneath of it, too. So pick yourself up some of this. You can shoot it directly through your airbrush. You don't need to thin it. Just keep in mind that it's not water-based, so you really need to take care of your brush. As soon as you're done using these colors, clean your brush thoroughly. That's my little tip for the day. Um, but yeah, it's fun, you know, and, and I really like the gold sheen that this lays down. So a little bass pattern here, obviously. A little crawfish here, a little red fluorescent sunburst orange belly and if you're seeing like an unusual amount of glitter in my stuff it's because of the burritos I'll tell you what I mean about that here in just a second but burritos are now made in Georgia um, and they use heavy glitter and there's literally glitter it looks like I've been to a strip club and I don't go to strip clubs but it looks like I have been because there's there's glitter all over the shop there's glitter all over the storefront there's glitter in the warehouse it's everywhere and it's really hard to get rid of once you have glitter all over the place so just word of the wise if you're gonna start doing plastics with lots of glitter be prepared to explain yourself as to where you've been I've got some vintage Listen to that sound. Those new storms and rappelers don't sound like that. Um, got some mag warts that are finally going out and some smaller pre-wrap wiggle warts. The blue bullet with that real pretty purple mist on the back end of it. And we've got a mad clown. And then old red. I just showed you that in a different one, so I'll keep moving, cycling through what we've got here. Also, there was uh, a series of 10 of these that I did in lipless. I've done a few series of 10, um, but this one, he asked for the one that I did a series of 10 in, in lipless for, so that is this pattern. And that river to see, this is a 110. These, tis the season, it is summertime, and I love throwing wakes in the summertime. Anything top water. I love seeing those blow-ups. This is Tupelo Honey. Some Jetson Lure Eyes in there. I love those orange. It's like candy. Literally, this is bass candy. One of my fave patterns. These are scale stencils. I'm not sure if Brian has released them, but over at Anarchy Model UK, Anarchy's uh, stencil system. He is just always doing new stuff over there across the pond in the UK. And you can see where it almost looks holographic. And that's a neat little trick when you do a couple of clear coats and then you add the detailing and the scaling over top of that. And this is what you get. Looks like it's literally floating above the bait. Super cool. Love doing patterns like this where I can kind of make a simple stencil jump off that bait and uh, that's how you do it you just lay some clear coat down you got to be patient you can't be shooting these out the door real quick but uh, do your base colors and then clear coat it come back and do your external detailing clear coat it again and it just looks like that's floating off that bait gives some dimension to your scales as well so neat little trick lots of tricks today it's been a while since we've talked and i miss you guys also doing some very simple red white and blue also john over at jetson and just a very cool simple almost a pro blue color with a silver chrome belly but that eye really makes this bait pop i love blue in the summertime stripers love blue in the summertime take this over to a spillway and go to town similar but different this is brian's scaling uh snakeskin just a little bit of red on that belly and this is iridescent that's why it looks like it's going from dark to light because it is this is just a simple createx iridescent red 
and it gets darker and then it gets lighter. A lot of people are asking what color chrome or blues I've been using. I'm kind of going back and forth. I've found the um, Spectratex metallic blue is really, really good as far as uh, making those baits pop. But the other thing that's really good with these is uh, just a plain, simple Createx. It is their um, pearlized blue. It's a really cool shade of blue. So for all you guys out there that are using it, highly recommend it. It's just one of the things that I use every day, especially on colors like Pro, Pro Blue and Bullet Blue, like you see on this vintage Magwort. Going back to these old Rapala. This is an old Rip and Wrap. Tiny little bait. And this is uh, some antique gold that I've covered. The normal colors that I do that, you can still see it up top. I just kind of sprayed the sides down with antique gold. And that completely changes the color. It's almost uh, an interference gold. It's not, but it kind of looks like it because you go from that dark. And then when the light hits it, there's that gold. But just a neat trick to play. Uh, really been kind of getting into that heavy as far as how to simulate and that's I'm constantly looking at how to simulate what a fish scale looks like as it's going through the water so that's one thing that if I ever stop learning then I'm in the wrong line of business because I learn something every single day that I spray and it's not always the most intricate patterns that do it a lot of the times it's just simple things like this and playing with paint and that's all that so you guys have been asking and asking and asking I'm finally gonna do it because that's gonna be a very long video is me going through all of the paint that I use because there's there's a lot there's a lot to go through with you guys so just have patience um, I'm constantly and there's more stuff over here that you guys kind of off camera all that stuff over there that's the thinner stuff but we're gonna go through that in a, a specific video for you guys but we'll put this back down. I'll stop moving you guys around. I know it's Friday. You probably just want to chill and not move around the room with me so much. Another Tupelo honey with a little antique gold on top. I've been digging that antique gold, folks. But just very simple patterns. I, all he asked was, I think, that um, for John Travis, that I just kind of dress him up a little bit. So I went ahead and painted him as well. This one didn't need anything other than a fresh clear coat and I'm gonna put some hooks on there for him so love these old vintage baits from Hedden. One of my faves. Both of these. Hang on a second. I think the mail's here. It wasn't the mail. It was FedEx. But we like FedEx too. Um, almost done with you guys for this morning. I showed these on Instagram yesterday. This is a set of four. There's two of these. These. This is uh, John B's Jacunda pattern from the Amazon Experience trip that he took a few years ago. It's one of the most popular patterns that I spray for you guys, and it's on this uh, Guggen Squad flat banger, which is a very effective bait. And then he asked for something a little bit different. It's a bright purple down into an orange, fading into a yellow. He asked for a black lateral line, so we went ahead and tricked that out a little bit for him as well. So these are going out to Mr. Irwin. Good stuff, flat bangers. And then the last thing that I'm going to show you guys today is a couple of these. I'm waiting on more of these. I've got um, the Shad in stock right now, but I'm waiting on an order of the bullgills, the baby bullgills. But just a fun, pretty little pattern. Love summer blue gill patterns. And then this one has got that Brian Best scaling on the belly. But you can see that there is no clear coat in between. That's a good comparison, just off the cuff. Um, this does not look like it's floating because there's no clear coat between the stenciling and the other colors that I have on this bait. So that is all the news that's fit to print today. Happy Friday. Oh, wait, one more, I'm lying. This is a dual hardcore. I also showed this off um, a couple of days ago, I wanna say, and then popped it up on Instagram. Now this, this 
beautiful bright pink that's glistening on the cheeks. That is mica powder. Very extra fine crushed pink mica powder. And you can set that, this is my last tip of the day, you can set that into the cheeks and into the scaling when you're doing these patterns with a little bit of opaque pearlescent. I use the Comart. And what that does is that lays it on to where when you clear coat this, you're not brushing it down the side and losing it. So that'll just quick set it. And then you can, if you want me to say that again, sure. It's called Comart Opaque Pearlescent. And it's a little tacky. So if you spray that with an airbrush onto mica, it will set the mica in place and dries very fast. And that will allow you to properly clear coat. Um, this does not have a home. I am probably going to sell this later on today, Friday, June 25th, either on my Facebook page or on Insta. But love doing trout patterns. I hope you guys have learned a couple of things today. Got more spray sessions coming out for you guys. Um, we are now getting ready to get into iCast mode. I'm going to be at iCast this year, so stay tuned for that. Um, I do have, I mean, we were just slammed at Fort Worth, guys. So I don't really have any video other than the time lapse, but we stayed busy for three days solid. So thank you guys. You are a blessing to all of us here at Bullshad and Jekyll Bates. I will see you on the next video. Cheers. Happy casting. Have a fantastic weekend. Bye.